Welcome back to chapter 10. This is another example that we're going to be able to use energy techniques to be able to answer. So this is a similar situation to a question that we had a few examples ago where we were trying to solve for the angular acceleration of the disk and the um, vertical acceleration of the hanging mass. But in this case, what we're trying to find is the final speed after this mass has dropped 20 centimeters. And so we're going to be figuring out what we have and recognizing that energy is going to be the easiest way forward here. So in this example, we can start to write down the information we have just because there's a lot of stuff to keep track of. So we have the mass of the disk is 2 kilograms. And the radius of the disk is 14 centimeters. 14 centimeters is 0.14 meters. And it's going to be able to rotate. So it's going to be able to have uh, rotation, although it's stuck to the wall, so it won't actually move from its current spot. Its height stays constant. No gravity energy changes for the disk. We also, though, have a small hanging mass that's 350 grams. 350 grams, if we convert this the way that we've been training since chapter 1, we get 0 0.35 kilograms. So we're holding this system in place, and then we let it drop. So this is really the before picture if we're thinking of this as an energy problem. And the after situation is that this is rotating and this block is moving and it's hitting the ground, so it's not at its initial spot. This height, by the way, 20 centimeters is 0 0.2 meters. All right, so what we can do is we can compare the before and after situations in the table that we're used to thinking about. So before, after, and this is really important. We saw an example that had two separate objects in chapter seven example videos. We saw it in the problem sets and we can see it here in chapter 10 as well. We're gonna be asking these questions about both masses yeses and noes, and we'll have two terms here that we're adding together. So at the beginning of the problem, we ask ourselves, is anything moving? Nothing is moving at the very beginning because we're holding it in place, so it starts at rest. And after, the disk is not physically moving. Moving means up and down or side to side, but the hanging mass, the hanging mass is definitely moving. So one half the little m v squared. All right, potential energy from gravity. We ask ourselves at the beginning of the problem, are any of these objects higher than they are at other points in the problem? The disk never changes how high it is, so that's a no for the disk. But the hanging mass is higher at the start because we know it drops to the ground. So little m g h. Nothing is higher at the end because the disk never gets higher or lower, and this is the small mass is lower. Potential energy of a spring. It's just really useful to train ourselves to always be asking all the questions, but there's no spring here. And then the kinetic energy of rotation. We are asking, are we rotating? At the beginning of the problem, although it is free to rotate, it is not actively rotating yet. We're holding it in place still. So in the same way that everything's not moving, everything is also not rotating. And at the end of the problem, the disk itself is rotating. So we will have one half I of the disk omega squared. But this hanging mass is not rotating at all. It is simply falling straight down. So that's a zero. And then we double check and we recognize that we are asking about work not as a before or after term, but separately for the work added. 
where we're figuring out are there any other forces that we haven't accounted for, a push, a pull, air resistance, or friction, and we're not given any information about other external forces. The tension um, we've seen before in energy problems, it cannot provide a work term. It is not adding energy to the system or taking energy out of the system. All right, so we have our energy before plus work added equals energy after equation. It's the same equation that we've seen all throughout chapter 7, and it's the same equation that we're using now. And the key thing here is that so far, the only real thing that has been different up until this point is just this kinetic energy of rotation term. Otherwise, everything that we've done is the same process that we did in Chapter 7 as well. All right, there are so many zeros here. I am not going to write them all out. But the energy before term only has MGH in it. The work added term is a zero. And then the energy after has two total terms in it. One half the tiny mass times V squared plus one half the disk's moment of inertia times omega squared. All right, we can plug in things that we have, but what will be useful to do is just off to the side, do a couple of um, small calculations first. First of all, if we're thinking about the radius of the disk, then V and omega are related to each other. R omega equals V. So that means that instead of omega, what we can write is V over 0.14 meters. So we'll be plugging that in. In addition, the disk moment of inertia is one half mass times radius squared. So we have one half times two times 0 0.14, and that whole thing is squared. And so we get 0 0.0196 kilograms times meters squared. All right, so let's plug in things that we have. So the little mass, 0 0.35 times 9.8 times 0 0.2 is equal to, we have 1 half times 0.35 times v squared plus, and this is where we're plugging in the things that I've color coded red here on the right side, 1 half times 0 0.0196 times v over 0 0.14 squared. All right, so we can clean this up a bit. This is 0 0.686 on the left. This first term is 0 0.175 V squared. And the second term, when we do 1 half times 0 0.0196 divided by 0 0.14 squared, what we get is 0 0.5 V squared. So these two terms can be added together. It's just like 2x plus 3x kind of thing. So then we'll only have one term on the right side. And to give myself plenty of base to finish the problem, I'm going to scroll down. So we have 0 0.686 is equal to 0 0.675 v squared. We divide both sides by 0 0.675, and then we take the square root of both sides. So we will get that V is equal to 1.008 or 1.01 1 .01 meters per second, and that will be our final answer. That's the hanging mass as it reaches the ground. So for this problem, all I've really scrolled off the page is the question wording itself. We can see all of the work here um, in front of us. 
The key thing was this is a chapter 7 energy problem where the additional things are the idea that r omega equals v, so that we can go back and forth between v and omega as needed, angular velocity and linear velocity, um, and that anything rotating, we have the rotational kinetic energy term and the i um, moment of inertia for different shapes. We've been seeing disks quite a bit in these examples, but you shouldn't just default to one half mr squared. Um, in general, students really only make a mistake on the new term here, but it's the part that makes this a chapter 10 problem. So make sure to, to be practicing this extra stuff that uh, isn't too complicated, but it's easy to to forget or to skip past. A lot of students, instead of putting one half i omega squared here, would put one half mr squared. And we really cannot be mixing these up because it means we're not even paying attention to what it is we're writing down. We need to make sure we understand why the terms look the way that they do. This should still look very similar to one half mv squared. It's the rotational equivalent of mass and the rotational equivalent of velocity squared. All right, we have one last example for the chapter, so I will see you in that last example video.